Everyone is building AI agents nowadays, but what most people don't understand is agents are only as good as the tools you give them. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use What's an XI Flows Engine, a platform for building tools out of your own data sources, whether that's a database, a REST API, a GraphQL API, or any other type of data. We'll be turning those data sources into tools using a CLI, and then we can deploy it to a live endpoint, and we can use this endpoint to fetch tool definitions and execute tools from modern frameworks such as Langgraph or Langchain. At the end of this video, you'll be able to build your own chat application and also build tools for your own enterprise data sources. So let's dive into VS Code and see how this all works. In VS Code, I've set up a new project where I imported the chat application that you can find in our GitHub repo. This chat application is just a small interface which I can use to chat with an agent. In this chat application, I'm going to create a new folder and this folder will be called WXFlows. So this is where I'm going to create my Flows Engine endpoint which is the endpoint that has access to the tools. So I'm going to move into the flows engine directory. And in here, I'm going to run a command to set up a new endpoint based on a list of tools. And for this, I'm going to use a set of pre-built tools. If you go to the flows engine GitHub, you can see we have multiple ways to use tools. We have a couple of community tools. So these are tools maintained by the community that you can use. For example, one for exchange rates, Google Books, and Wikipedia. Or you can also create your own tool from your own data, whether that's a database or a REST API, or something else, it doesn't really matter. For this video, I'm going to use two of the pre-built tools. Before you can start importing your tools, you need to make sure that you have the Flows Engine CLI installed. You can find the installation instructions on the link down below. I'm going to run a set of commands here, starting with wxflows init, and then the init command will get a name for the endpoint. So the tools endpoint will be called api slash wxflows tool calling. Then the next line, I'm going to start importing my tools. First tool will be the Google Books tool. Uh, if you look here, you can see I give a name to the tool. I link to the GitHub repo where you can download the community tools from. I give a tool description as well. So the tool description is really important. This is going to help the large language model to figure out why it should use this tool. But you can also provide additional context, for example, how to use the search query uh, for this tool. I'm also going to pass in the Wikipedia tool. Wikipedia tool is very similar. It's using the same zip file or a similar zip file from the GitHub repo. It also needs a tool name and it needs a tool description, which is basically retrieve information from Wikipedia. So when I run this command, it's going to create a couple of files. If we open this wxflows directory in the finder on the left, you can see we now have a toml file. In this toml file, you can find your endpoint name and you can also find all the tools that are available. So we have our Google Books tool, and then we have a Wikipedia tool. Of course, you can add more tools here, either via the CLI or by copy pasting this and substituting some of the values with the tool you need. As mentioned, we have community tools, but you can also build your own tools. And for building your own tools, you would be using the CLI. After generating the configuration file or making any changes there, the next step would be to deploy this to a live endpoint. For this, I'm going to run wxflows deploy. And this will deploy my tool configuration to an endpoint that I can then use in the chat application that I have in this overview. So this is my live endpoint. I need my API key as well. And in order to retrieve your API key, you can run the command wxflows wmi, and then specifically ask for the API key. So let's look at our demo app and see if we can make it working with this live endpoint. So let's close the terminal and move back into the top directory. The chat application needs a couple of environment variables. Of course, if you're using Watsonix AI for LLMs, you need to provide your API key and project ID for Watsonix AI. And then of course, you would need your API key for Flows Engine and the endpoint. So we just saw the endpoint in our terminal. For the API key, you can run a command, which is wxflows will my. So I already inserted my credentials in this environment file here. So the only other thing I need to do, I need to run this application. And for this, I can run the command npm run dev. I'm using Next.js for the application and I will be able to open it for my browser. First, we deployed our Flows Engine tool endpoint and we put the tool endpoint in our chat application. What the chat application is doing, it's building an agent using Langgraph. And this agent is going to help us with tasks evolving around our list of tools. So let's ask a question like, what do you know about the book Escape by James Patterson? And this is a book I recently read we're using is Mr. Large, which is available on Watsonix AI. 
You can then see it actually found the book uh, using the Google Books API and also Wikipedia. We can ask follow-up questions like what do you know about the author because Langraph will keep memory of our conversation. Let's also look at our VS Code project because in there we can see the tool calls that were being made by the agent. You can see there are multiple tool calls. So the first tool call is to retrieve the book written by Patterson called Escape from Google Books. It's going to take in the author, the title, the volume ID, and then it's going to use a JSON ADA tool to transform the data. So Flows Engine has a built-in tool which we call the JSON ADA tool, which is JSON ADA to transform the output from one tool call to the required input for another one. And then you can find using the same Google Books tool, we're now getting a specific book. So first we're searching for books, then we're transforming data, and then finally we're searching for a specific book. And this is the info you see on the screen. Let's look at the implementation, which you can find in this source directory. And there's a file here called lib slash langrafts. What I'm doing here, I'm using some Langchain constructs. I'm using the Watson XAI chat instance from Langchain. I then use memory, of course. And most importantly, I'm using the Flows Engine SDK. With the Flows Engine SDK, you can create a connection to your Flows Engine endpoint. And you can also handle the tool calling because Langchain or the agent or Langgraph isn't doing the tool calling for us. Instead, it's sending a request to Flows Engine and Flows Engine is handling tool calling. And this allows you to handle things such as tool creation, uh, authorization for tools, but also a combination of tools. Maybe you want to combine the Google Books API with another API. And you can do all of this by creating flows and tools in Flows Engine. I'll be showing this in the next video. For this video, let's focus on the Langgraph implementation. So we're connecting to our Flows Engine list of tools, then we're retrieving the list of tools, and we're passing the list of tools to the model. Of course, we've set up a model using Watson XAI, and as mentioned, we're using Mr. Large. Then there is some code for Langchain, for example, to determine if it should do a next tool call or not, a function to call the model, and then here's our state graph. In Langgraph, agents are represented as state. So we pass the state access to the model, access to the tools, and then the state manager is going to make sure that everything will be called at the right time. Then if we look down, we have a function which we call submit question, and this will be used to invoke our Langgraph state together with our list of messages, and it's going to return an answer. You can see we're using a thread ID, so the thread ID will actually help us to retain memory. The front end of the application is quite simple. I'm using the chat interface that we make available at IBM as part of the Carbon component library. If I go back to my application, we can start asking a follow-up question that would involve the Wikipedia tool. I can ask, tell me more about the author. For this, I'm expecting it to use the Wikipedia tool to retrieve more information about the author of her book. That's how easy it is to build your own tools and plug them into an agentic framework. In this video, we used Watson XAI Flows Engine together with Langgraph. Of course, you can also use different agentic frameworks or build your own tools out of your own databases or APIs. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the subscribe button below and also join the What's the Next Developer Hub Discord channel to ask any question you might have around using Flows Engine or What's the Next AI.